Oh. All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Rutgers NHETC uh, High Energy Theory Seminar. Today, we're really happy to have Ju Wen Wang. Uh, Ju Wen is a research scientist at Howard University uh, Center of Mathematical Sciences uh, and Applications. Um, he obtained his PhD from MIT under the supervision of Professor Xiao Gang Wen. Uh, so Ju Wen has done lots of interesting work um, today. He's going to tell us uh, about some of his recent work uh, on quantum criticality beyond the standard model and actual unification. So Ju Wen, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Fei. Can you hear me clearly? So if, in case my microphone, my laptop is really old. If it doesn't work well, I, I, I'm happy to repeat. Okay, it's, my, it's my great honor to attend this prestigious Rogers New High Energy Theory Center seminar. Thank you very much. It's really my great honor. I won't take it for granted. Every time I speak will be uh, my uh, really my rare opportunity. Thanks very much. And thank you for attending. So uh, please interrupt me and ask questions anytime during my talk. Uh, we, we have one hour. I, I really likely to go over time, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I need to skip something. Uh, first of all, uh, I should post uh, this. Uh, there's a slide available. Let me post this link on the chat. So, so he will be, you'll be able to, you'll be able to uh, uh, download it if you need it. Just a second. And the, the talk title is the uh, two, two parts of the talk. One is about uh, earlier work by on ultra unification, which I'll say what it is. Another is about quantum criticality beyond the standard model. So these are based on uh, these papers. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, collaboration with uh, brilliant uh, colleagues and friends, Yizhong Yu from UCSD and Zhe Wan from. Uh, Yao Science Center. Okay. So the outline of my talk will be the following. I'll start with uh, some of the introduction on a proposal to go beyond standard model and grand notification with certainly some assumptions I will state clearly and some what are the new ingredients. These are in the framework of quantum field theory or quantum matter in general. They are constraints from non perturbative global anomalies and cobaltism and classifications. And I state the two it's kind of a tool is actually widely accepted, and one assumptions I will say there. And there are some consequences. For example, we need to introduce gap topological sectors, TQFT at low energy, and gap topological order, or the finite energy gap at some scale, and with fractionalized excitation like anions or anionic fractionalized strings in the system. Uh, for the reason I will tell you, oh, we need to cancel some global anomaly by some gap CFT. So these are just some possibility. It doesn't say it must be true, but I, I enumerate those possibilities. Or extra dimension, instead of living on three plus one D uh, vacuum only, we actually have some four plus one D system. And we are living on the boundary of such a quantum system. So my approach or all I'm based on quantum field theory and quantum matter. I don't use any dynamical gravity or Einstein theory or gravity. I only use a quantum field theory and the gravity will only be a, a background non-dynamical probes such as gravitational anomalies that have a check. So this is basically uh, my logic. And some ingredients which I'll introduce will be something called uh, contrast, the symmetry breaking way of getting a, a mass comparing with the preserve, symmetry preserving anomaly three way to get some a mass or some symmetry extension way to get mass and for energy gap in general. I'll, 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 I'll say this right now, I just give an outline. I'll contrast the conventional way to think about mass by giving Dirac or Marano mass to neutrinos, for example. And then I will I'll compare the case, uh, the, the kind of mechanism I would say of the interaction way to introduce those masses. And for people like uh, Professor Greg Mo, who is a uh, fan of uh, more uh, uh, robust mathematical object like cobaltism. So what the kind of a theory we'll look at is this type, like a Z-sitting class of four dimension with pin plus structure. And this will be uh, used in some version of a, a, a standard model uh, gauge group, sim internal symmetry group, and the space time, and some uh, discrete B minus L are include. So there are some kind of uh, five dimension and four dimension cobaltism uh, group that include the Z system. 
And this will be in a very analog sketch very quickly. I don't think I have the time for the passing the door or for writing down this autonomy equation in certain scenario. In the second part of the talk, first, I will go to quantum criticality beyond the standard model based on work with Yifan Liu. And this will concern another uh, non perturbic global anomaly, which is a C2 class, or sometimes known as W2, W3 of the steeple wind class type of anomaly. This is also a 5D cobolism environment, requires space time spin structure. And for example, I can include internal symmetry like spin 10. Right. So I will also mention that, just to give you some flavor of what the, the talk will be about. And in that case, uh, the kind of uh, criticality we'll discuss sometimes uh, actually it's good to look at it as a four dimensional boundary criticality of some 5D bulk systems. And in certain cases, actually, bulk also become critical, and critical in a sense become gapless. And what's new, what's go beyond the standard model is that we actually can introduce some gut fields field such that it become uh, fractionalized or we call fragmentary for certain reason because it's not quite the usual fragmentations you are familiar. And those are from the pattern theory, fractionalized the gut fields and there are new consequences and some, some dark gauge sectors that can be written down, constrained by the global anomaly constraints. Okay. And then in the third part, I will combine synthesis, synthesis this two approach and then make some conclusion. Okay. And uh, compare some scenario about the one generation of fermions is 15 or 16, etc. And uh, comment about topological criticalities, including topological order in, in the criticality. And also comment about the recent development about this non invertible uh, global symmetry, the so called the categorical high symmetries. And any comment or question so far? If anything is unclear, please interrupt me. Okay, so let's go to the first part. So, SNAP model has uh, 15 plus, possibly plus one more, or maybe not, biofermions, which is space time spinner, two component, left handed, let's say in, in, in my talk, world, all right left handed space time spinner. And they have some internal symmetry uh, group, also in the internal symmetry group representation part. Written in the figure. And these are basically the familiar quarks, UD, and uh, the right handed, left handed one as a SU2 doublet, or the right handed one, which I, we, we all flip to the left handed with the conjugate uh, U1 charge number. Here I write the SU3, so in, let's say the three as the fundamental in the three, or the SU2 here as a doublet or singlet. So hopefully you can read the table. And these are the quark sectors. And here we also introduce the U1 hypercharge Y and the U1 X. Y is the electroweak hypercharge with a sum normalization such the minimal ones integer value one instead of one over six. So the electron has a U1 hypercharge six. And the U1 X is some version of the barrier minus lepton type of symmetry, which I introduced more, but right now I just write it down, okay? So the quantum number familiarly for most energy people will be written together as all this uh, in this representation. But there's a question mark, let's zoom in. There's a question mark. Uh, there's a right-hand neutrinos, so-called sometimes stereo, at least stereo to the SU3 and SU2 gauge sectors. Uh, we don't know whether they are there. In a sense, people in the phenol indeed discuss that, but we don't have really a, a Solid confirmation of what exactly is their nature. So the kind of open issue which we will address or protect is that with the neutrino right-handed exists or not. If they are, how many? Because we have a three generation, do we need three of them, or do we need two of them, or one of them, or even more? And how do we uh, get a mass for the left-handed right -handed neutrinos? Are they just developed by other masses? Are there something else? So I'll propose some other resolutions, uh, which in the end, the whole structure can be called ultra limitations. These are other ways to get masses, and we can replace neutrinos, for example, by other new sectors, but based on some assumption of state. For example, four dimensional T of T, and which couple to the standard model, or four dimensional uh, C of T, conformal field theory, which in certain case maybe regards some way of thinking about unparticle physics of uh, Howard Georgia. And also, we can possibly. Uh, write a theory on some five dimension or boundary of five dimension invertible TFT. Okay, any questions so far? So this slide is very important, just make sure you are still with me. Great. 
So let me just pause one second in case anything question. Okay. So the conventional way we get mass is quadratic terms of uh, fermion bilinear pairing. For example, with the uh, Higgs term, uh, which can pair the uh, left-handed uh, doublet of SU2 to the uh, left, uh, the SU2 doublet also the Higgs, and also right-handed the single of SU2. For example, these are conventional if you want to get the raw mass. If you consider Marana mass, we can just pair some biofermions with itself in this way. The more, more popular or more kind of uh, uh, most people uh, when they thinking about neutrino mass, actually they will both include a Dirac type of mass and non mass. You may write down some matrices like this way as some doublet uh, of SU2 of the uh, leptons, but take only this uh, neutrino sectors. And then also introduce possibly some, uh, some generations. Here I just write three generations of the right hand neutrinos and then pair them in some metrics with spiral mass and uh, Marana mass. So the CISO mechanism tells us if we diagonalize the mass eigenstates. So here we are writing the flavor eigenstates, but we need to find the mass eigenstates for the mass. So they will have a small mass if we put the stereo, uh, this M mass to be very, very large. Some people put it into a dust scale, and then the Dirac mass will be some conventional scale. Then this will be much, much the, the, the eigen mass eigenstates, the eigenvalue will be much, much smaller than the Dirac mass. But here today, we are not uh, going to go this route. We may include also this into our uh, scenario, but these are just part of things. We are question what are the possibilities. So we will question what are other ways to get mass to replace, even replace, not even need the neutrinos in our vacuum. We may need actually replace that by the ODTP of T or CFT or window T. Of T. And the crucial insights from the discrete sector, uh, like stereo minus lab form type of symmetries and some global non probability anomalies and probability theory. Any question? Okay, so let's just make sure we're on the same page. So the anomalies in high energy community, it's better actually go back to thinking about everything in terms of global symmetry, uh, such that the, the anomaly we care about is the total anomaly of global symmetry. So there's such an obstruction to gauge a global symmetry G, which for example is a G bundle with some G connection and some prefer a manifold, maybe Riemannian with some metric. And then it leads to some yield definers but uh, there's such obstruction to a G gauge theory. But it's useful to have, have such a G back on probe field and to confirm the quantum dynamics. In many cases, when we do such a, a gauge transformations, we may get some uh, phases, which is invertible. And the implication for that in mathematics is something called section of the determined light bundle. And the implication in dynamics is there's no non-trivial, uh, there's no trivial G symmetry, a gap phase. And in my talk, I will write a symmetry G in terms of both space time and internal symmetry and in some way like G space time. Yeah, yes, 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 please, please, please. Yes, thanks very much. It's no non-trivial G symmetry. Yeah, no, tri no trivial, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. that sentence. Let me just make sure what I mean. Uh, yeah, no trivial, which means it should be non-trivial. It, it cannot be trivially symmetric gap. It must be, for example, true symmetry breaking, or maybe uh, it is true symmetric. Is this then, a condition? Wait, I, I don't understand. Oh, this. this is not a condition. This is a dynamical consequence. Sorry. This is a consequence if you have a a, a to whole in G. Then oh, you have, yeah. Okay, yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for, sorry for putting this not in a good order. Yeah, so these are common about the dynamics. Once we have this true symmetric, uh, the, these are due symmetry, but has a couple anomalies. Then this anomalous symmetry imply we cannot have a due symmetric, a trivial gap vector. We may need yes, a symmetry. True. Yes, okay. GPFT, yes, that's very good. And then, and then, then since, uh, since uh, Greg mentioned, no, let just bring up. We actually need to specify in our talk, in that case, we will consider those are invertible type of anomalies was we'll specified by, by one high dimensional invertible TPFT known as some cobordian invariant or some cobordian group. Here I follow the notation of uh, uh, Free and Hopkins in his work in 1604 archive, 2016 on the reflection positivity and the uh, invertible TPFT, which we use the notation TP, stands for topological phase. And these are the cobordian group they use. And for experts like Greg, I will just say that these are the cobordian group, including the Torsion class of the 
the D dimension of the same symmetry G, but also take the free class from the D plus one dimension. At least, at least I think uh, uh, that, that's, that's right. So, so this will be a topological phase classified by uh, this covalent group. Actually, sorry, I haven't taken this are D plus one, I have a type of yeah, D plus one. The D dimension anomaly, and, and then we have, let me just correct this. D plus one dimension of covalent group. And I, I, will, I may use idle notations and the covalent group I write this way. The torsion part, which means the discrete ZN class will be the same, but uh, the free part will be shifted by one dimension. So, I mean, May I ask, yeah. uh, yes. just a notational question. Please, uh, please, please. Uh, what is this uh, space time internal symmetry G? So, it's a, a semi direct product of the two groups, but what does it mean that it's divided by something? Yes. Uh, in, for example, if I have a system with uh, fermions, sometimes the G internal symmetry might contain fermion parity. And the space time symmetry with fermions, a lot, a lot of cases, we need a spin structure. So, this are uh, the a Z2 graded by fermion parity from spatial or second group. In that case, mm -hmm. if I write down the spin symmetry and some internal symmetry, for example, like SU2, we can have a choice whether we want to constrain the SU2 internal symmetry must be uh, the same as the fermion parity shear with the spin D minus one. In that case, I can share the Z2 fermion parity. So these are the shear. And I see. Yeah, for okay. other cases, for example, if you change SU2 to U1, you have a spin C. So these are the type of things I was trying to refer to. I see. Thank yeah. you. That's good. Yeah, this is not clear. Please ask again. Just make sure. So then uh, for condensed matter people, a lot of time we try to uh, regularize this and in some uh, uh, quantum latest model. Then for those people, the way to say anomalies will be internal part, just internal, not quite space time. Internal symmetry G cannot be locally on site or regularized in some on site way. So there's a strict notion of on site symmetry on the Hilbert space. It cannot be strictly on site. So it was it maybe smeared out a bit, X on some neighbor side. In the continuum, it almost like on site, but it's not quite. We need to really regularize to see this. Then at the deep, you will be such as the true symmetry that cannot be realized on site. You can think of some a latent scale or some Planck or Cuddle scale. And those are the anomalous non on site symmetry or internal symmetry that condensed matter people talk about. But the same thing is that because the, the same situation is also as the obstruction to gauge the true because the symmetry is not, not local on site. You cannot quite put a link variable uh, to, to represent a gauge field and do the gauging because the symmetry X is slightly non on site, then it's very difficult to gauge. So that's also a way to manifest the two now. But today's talk, I will only just use this tool and using the condensed method view. And any questions so far? Okay, I'm kind of slow. So uh, because anomaly has very adjective to say, just clarify again last time. So we will say some people call invertible non-invertible anomaly, which means that whether the partition functions in one high dimension uh, that leaves the uh, T Q of T, whether this phase is absolute value one. In that sense, the partition function Z of some manifold N is just complex space Z theta. In that case, it will be invertible. And which is a, a capture by invertible T Q of T. In my talk, I only discuss invertible anomaly, which means I only write down invertible T of T in one high dimension to capture the anomaly. I will not discuss this new consideration of non-invertible case. Secondly, there is also a distinction between the Pertoli local anomaly captured by a Pertoli Feynman diagram, which is captured also by a small, the infinitesimal diffeomorphism or gauge, gauge formations. This is in contrast with the non pertoli global anomaly, which is only captured by large diffeomorphism or gauge formations. So we'll discuss both Z class and ZN class. And ZN class are in, in, in beyond the Feynman diagram calculations. And we can also specify the probes, which either is gauge probe or gauge gravity or gravitational probes. So these are another adjective. So please don't be confused with the global anomaly, which is about the global non perturbative nature of the anomaly, with the gauge, uh, which is about the probe nature. Okay. So I hope this is clear. And when people talk about actual chiral symmetry, it's about the nature of that probe is a chiral nature of internal symmetry. And we will use all this integrity to describe their anomalies. If the uh, com completion of that system required, for example, a uh, manifold with SO, spatial orthogonal, or orthogonal, or some E of D structure, uh, which I won't discuss this video, and spin group, pin group, D pin, D pin group, 
we may call this a bosonian fermionic type of anomalies. And certainly, this also can say that for the, the underlying theory for the gauge invariant operator, if at the UV, will it be a bosonian only or will it be quasi fermion objects? And the background fields uh, in the sense of uh, global symmetry that we can turn on, that basically is, uh, is the, the way we say detect anomaly, uh, in the sense of anomaly of total anomalies. But we can also dynamical gauge them. Then this is dynamical gauge anomaly cancellation. Uh, people in gauge theory, they check this uh, anomaly cancellation. Okay, so these are the test works. Okay, so we fixed the adjective. So from now, I think it will be all clear which context we are talking about. Any question about those slides? Great. So uh, just just to show that uh, we can always go back to consider, for example, even the one example is for the local anomalies with the vertex uh, triangle diagram in 2 plus 1D, this vertex coupled to big one field with global symmetry. In that case, we can all couple to all big one field. In that case, this will be a total anomaly of some big one symmetry G. But we can also consider when this, the symmetry G is gauge, is not gauge anomaly, or gauge, dynamical gauge anomaly cancellation. So that, that must be canceled. Well, in this case, it's just a way to say whether the system has some a symmetry realized in an anomalous way, but it doesn't say the thickness of the theory. But this one, that, that's non vanished is the thickness of the theory. Certainly, we also have one global symmetry and vertex as some current, for example, for big one gauge field, and coupled to dynamic gauge field, this will be a very familiar ADJ type of anomalies, the actual current non conserved. Right. And if you couple down the dynamic you can be vector gauge field. And then certainly we can also have other ways. Okay, so the, the nature is that despite whether we discuss local, oh, uh, sorry, the lo perturbably local or non perturbably global anomaly, we can always start from thinking about some global symmetry. So that's actually the starting point we will discuss the classification anomalies, invertible one. But uh, since we are going to talk about neutrinos, and let's more closely look at what neutrino can couple to. One is the barium minus lepton, the other is the gravity. And just from the perturbative anomaly, you already say something. One is this E minus L with gravity, which you learn from textbook. Actually, this, uh, this uh, anomaly depends on your view. You can again have all these different views. But uh, this anomaly is not canceled unless you have a right hand neutrino, actually. But it doesn't necessarily need to be canceled. You can just be some total anomaly there if you use E, e minus L as some global symmetry. But, 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 but that's one point of view. But you can also add right hand neutrino. And another one is three vertex all coupled to global B minus L. And this one also does not um, vanish unless you introduce right hand neutrino. The reason that this is crucial is because this anomaly of perturbity is Z class. There's actually not much room you can do other than just keep that anomaly there or break the symmetry or a right hand neutrinos. So the question is here, do we really require the 16 biofermion? And is that B minus so it's really there or do one? Or can it be this discrete sub two? There are they are they are they are higher dimensional operators we can add to a standard model which indeed break B minus L. And if you add a Morana mass term actually also break B minus L. But we may be more careful to ask whether they are discrete demands of group, which might be more essential than the new one continuous sector. Okay, any question? So that's why we go to a bit more. Wheelchair and Z in 79 propose a variant of BMIS L, which I like and other people like very much, is this one, which makes with BMIS L and hypercharge. That's what we hypercharge. Uh, I will use the convention which normalize hypercharge as uh, six times of the conventional. Uh, Text to one. So this will be in all integer value and it will be written this way. Then I just summarized the U1 with gravity. And uh, so you want to be uncertain in gravity, they may have a perturbative local anomaly. The conventional way might be just either thinking about the current might be not conserved, the digital anomaly, or it can be broken to some subgroup, or maybe a right hand neutrinos at some high energy. And Marana mass can actually already break the U1B mass L. But the, the, the lesson we learned is neutrino might have some mass or, or, or have some mass sectors that uh, uh, something coupled to gravity. And uh, these, are, these are the type of, uh, maybe I kind of mix up. The type of lesson is that uh, uh, the, the right hand neutr or the neutrino sectors and the B minus L and the gravity, they are some subtle relations. Actually, this is a sentence I copied from some, uh, just some review on 
this the neutrino physics, but I think that's a lesson from people talk about all these things. Okay, today, today actually we will ask if we break these four discrete sectors, for example, uh, the one that uh, this Wilshire and Z propose, but uh, actually there's the one uh, which uh, looks uh, very interesting is a discrete Z4 version of that, and which actually has some natural embed, embed, embedded into the spin tank center, and which does not require the U1X. And if you add, for example, some uh, four fermion interactions, it turns out that not the four fermion interaction will break continuous U1, B minus L will be at symmetry, but you can still achieve some Z4, discrete Z4. So this Z4 center is possibly more robust and interesting to look at. And another interesting fact is that we can ask again whether those perturbative anomaly is still there or whether it's gone, uh, whether it's non particular anomaly. So, in particular, we'll look at the Z4 and gravity as non particular anomalies, and which is a existing class. They are studied by these papers. Okay. And the Z4 contains the center Z2 for non parity. So, the, the, the summary about the check of our anomaly. So uh, by Kobolism actually go back to three, maybe much earlier in the 2006. He, in his term is some generalized cohomology. And I think what he checks is actually only one case at spin 10 times S4. And he said there's no uh, global anomaly. You only get a Z class of fertility anomaly. So let's say there's no global anomaly in the SU5. And I think he concluded that there's no global anomaly in the standard model. But maybe it's a bit quick because standard model group is not quite SU5, and it depends on how you break down the SU5 and whether you can SU5 sector also does not contain the beam has L. So that's a lot of room to, to actually. And more recently, after the work by Fred and Hopkins uh, in 2016, uh, these people, gentlemen, they actually write a beautiful paper to include all these cases. And uh, about the same time, actually, we are checking another global anomaly involving the spin and spin, spin space time spin. Sorry, the first part is spin space time, and the second part is internal. So, see in the very beginning, and and also this. And there's also a uh, paper in 2019 around the same time we check more. Uh, I think uh, all paper in in this last one are inspired by our previous works and also my own early work. We, we also include a Z4. But it includes also uh, the, the one that I mentioned is a discrete B minus L and the standard model is good altogether. And then ask what are the classification of anomalies. And I will show you in the next slides. I think the previous was kind of more conservative view, say that uh, we want to see whether the anomaly is canceled. But uh, I think uh, 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 somehow the statement there is that they seem either just assume we will just add a right hand neutrino, the 16 valve formula. And, the perspective I'm taking, and also the, my, my later words, that I kind of take this as opportunity. I knew I would not to go beyond the matter. If you question whether the 16 spiral fermion is there, and then let me show you. So the, these are the results, which I don't think I have time because I have a second part that I'm going to go through. So these are just uh, the data uh, which we can convert this also. Either the Z to the fifth, these are the totally local anomaly. We can all write down Feynman diagram for them. And Z2 squared, Z4, Z16 are the global anomalies. And I write down the coordinates and environment. I know exactly their mathematical meaning. I'm not sure I have a time to explain. Uh, but we will use the most important points, the, the larger the, the, the summaries that one just need to check whether these anomalies are, are canceled or not. And also depends on whether you want to interpret B minus L is preserved or aged, or whether just a global symmetry is a total anomaly. But uh, the, the punchline is that only the Zin class will not be canceled if you assume the 15 biofermion per generation. Then there's a room. There are three missing right hand neutrinos. We don't aid it. We can ask for there are new playground we can play with to go beyond the model. And this is the one place I, I find very hard. I think this is the only thing I find uh, interesting that can really go something beyond the same model, but with some solid mathematical checks. And also check the uh, this with SV5 and other all cancel. There's a longer talk I get on YouTube about this cancellation I check uh, on the spot, but right now today we won't. Uh, and then if we include spin space time with spin 10 internal, there's also one Z2 analogy. This one is very similar to the new SV2 analogy I did with Vernon Witten. And then this will play a very important role in the second part of my talk, which is known as the steeple Winnie class W3W3. 
it's slightly different than the WW3 uh, people discuss in a lot of uh, uh, literatures also recently, because most of them, they only consider the space-time TM tangent bundles. There is a constraint between space-time tangent bundle and the gate bundle of the spin time margin to the SOM bundle. And the, this constraint is important to uh, capture this anomaly, which means it's not just a gravitational anomaly, it's a mixed gauge and gravitational anomaly. Any questions so far? Okay, so let me speed up. So the control is that these are the Z to the fifth. Check on the textbook and so they vanished. I have more comments, but you can read my slides. And then we are saying that the other Z2, Z4, Z16, they have a subtle global anomaly. A lot of them are related to mutated version of which anomaly. Anomaly, uh, 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 some of them are related to uh, 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 this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to say how should I explain this in the short term. Some of them are related to, uh, like this one is related to this uh, uh, one dimensional uh, spin cobaltism There's a Z2 class. And I think this just means some uh, Ramon circles with thermal parity on the circle and cannot be cobalt and contribute. And then it, you know, that, that's kind of data. So, so in my paper, I, I explain all this topological term in more detail, but today, the punchline is all this actually already canceled in the standard model context, but the, the six I have a room. So if you want to have a 15 mile per mil, are they alternate, alternative stories? So that go back to my original question. And after plugging the corner numbers and checking that only this question mark might play a rule. We might, we might replace it. If we just feel in the right-hand neutrino, hold down the talk end, nothing interesting. But that's a question. Are they really there? Why the neutrino always has so, so much mysteries that the you heard what's mysterious about it. So these are my larger two ultra location. If the existing global now not canceled by the 15th generation biopermium, what are the replacement? The assumption, let me state clearly, on these three. One is assume the standard model gauge group, which I don't think is assumption at all, but let me just state it because these are not quite mathematical proof. We cannot prove this, but let me assume this. I think every physicist will assume this is true. They are whole version of the models on Z2. And then we have a 15 times three file from of CERT. We don't know right-hand neutrino nature enough to put on textbook, I think. And the third one is my assumptions, discrete mass L plays on important rule. It can actually be preserved, or it can maybe not, but we want to utilize, uh, utilize this and enumerate all the possibility. If we want to, we don't want to cheat the continuous one by this discrete part. Which possibly already emphasized by the Z in 79, then we can we can think what are the possibilities. And uh, if, if you believe, if you believe this whole theory needs to invent quantum gravity, and if this is equal still there, then it must be dynamical gauge. Maybe you already be broken and high energy, but who knows? If they are dynamical gauge, then we, we should also think they must be preserved. So then check all these anomalies and find out the consequence other than standard low with. Standard law that uh, you can either have a C4 preserved gabless zero mass at a kinetic scale, but the Higgs actually will break the Z4 uh, dynamically once Higgs condensed. And it can also be broken, but you can add MRI mass, and that's, that's standard law. You just add a 16 value per mil. But the proposal I, I gave there was saying that it could be Z4 symmetric preserved by some gap of T. And these are known as some green shorts type of mechanism, but topological one. In maybe high energy literature, and also known as surface or boundary topological over. I think first uh, uh, emphasized and proposed by Bishwan and Central in 2012. Actually, I think this work might be earlier, and even our work was work uh, when I'm written on the symmetric extension might be even earlier the topological green shot methods. But I'm not quite sure, but I just list them together. These are kind of things of the mechanism I'm talking about. And then it could also be going to instead of using the four dimensional theory to cancel the a global anomaly, we can just add a five dimension in the TLT. So we may live on the boundary of such a in the TLT, which is uh, a TR partially single eta invariant, APS invariant, and Poincare dual, where some this uh, Z4 gauge field, Z4 X mark Z2 gauge field, I write AZ2. So these are the invariant, a 40 pin plus and PD Poincare dual that you will cover this. It's not quite covered in the research. PD over this A, these are the fighting there. 
then certainly you might be able to gauge it if, if you believe it's equal steel layer, if you want to gauge in the end, then the whole system will be a couple of ID and 40 zero. And it also could be easy for to break. It can be uh, break, you can be breaking gap or gapless. It could be some landlord phases. Uh, landlord is very similar to breaking other phases. It could also be uh, gapless CFT. So all these are the possibilities. But it says that if those things really are there, then it's, it's a room to go beyond uh, high energy genome type of uh, particle physics by actually high energy genome content of gap extend excitations beyond the conventional particle physics because of the capital CFT sectors on particle sectors, just based on this analogy here. Any questions so far? Okay. So then, then the next slide just say that uh, if we really write down, then the theory may live on, what I write about this standard model sector may live on the boundary of some extra dimension. And uh, there are some gauge forces that uh, include already in the SM we got, but they're here today, uh, in the first part I told I say, it will actually require one high dimensional vertical T with the right hand neutrino on our layer. But you can couple, you can connect them to particular these sectors or CFD sectors, which I just draw schematically with some extended object of line surfaces. So people who are fascinated or obsessed with those stand TKFT or stand objects, I think there's a room actually equally important or even more robust in some way because they are topological. Uh, to the standard model physics. And all, to, all, thing, all, to, all together can put together in, in some way just by cancel that anomaly. Certainly, as I said, these are just all uh, hypotheses in some way, but you can take this seriously. I, I do take this very seriously. Any questions so far? Okay, and if the ZFO at the high energy- uh, some, Sorry, Joe, yeah, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So there is some question in the chat. Oh. Uh, what is the difference between dynamical gauging and just gauging? Oh, very good. Uh, actually, actually, when I say gauging, it could be a background, a, sim a symmetry coupled to background field. In essence, the, the, the gauge bundle or gauge connection is not somewhere in the past in the world. But most of the time, when I say gauging, actually, I really mean dynamical, which means the, the gauge connection and gauge bundle are somewhere in the past in the world. So the, the, the non-dynamic gauging, if you say that, is just a fixed background, a background field. The background field is a classical field. So the particle function depend on this background value, maybe Z or some A. But uh, the dynamical one will be we need to sum over this gate bundle and connect okay. it. Yeah, yeah, that's very clear. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so then even more, if you really want to think about Vino, then we should write on the constraint clearly. The minus three and then the sum new right hand neutrino and possible new hidden sector. If that proposed to really need to cancel, then this can be zero mass 16. They are constrained actually. If you want to construct symmetry preserving purely gap phase, there's a construction by Cordova and Omori who say that our class cannot preserve that discrete symmetry and, and also with the gap deep between 4D. But the even class actually can constructable, constructable. So there are some constraints even try to control this theory. And these are the words. Okay, so uh, I don't think I will have time to talk about that. I'll just say that in order to construct such a TKLT, you give a talk uh, on YouTube. If it's not clear, you can ask me privately or maybe in another seminar I can talk about this again. Is that uh, the Z same class new in Z setting with this E by invariant actually can be written in some simpler form if we only focus on the even class. And I use the tricks that we can uh, decompose this eta with some half round cavalry invariant. Uh, PD with those same gauge field, but with different dimensions. And also the uh, one dimensional spin uh, cobaltism invariant with Z2. I think you, you probably say it's Ramon circle. And these are the uh, bosonic A to the face, bosonic, uh, so called bosonic uh, convertible T of T or SPT. And then once you boil down to this way, uh, the construction we kind of try to do is that there's a mechanism to construct symmetry preserving that phase. A scat phase and similar to confinement, but without this symmetry breaking. It's, it's not quite confinement because I don't really need one point symmetry here, but these are, uh, these are gap phase with symmetry, with symmetry preserving, two symmetry preserving. And that construction is called a symmetry extension that we use. And that, that required to extend the symmetry that I, I speak about spin times equal multiple with possible other standard model and got internal symmetry group by extend by a short exact sequence to a total group. You can find such a uh, non-trivial covalent invariant 
can be trivialized by appropriate tension in this group. And then that, that actually, I say that the, once I do this extension, the whole now is actually lifted or gone. But this is equal to the gate. After you gate, you bring down a T-curve of these sectors. So you use the gate that is equal to TKLT with this spin transient force structure. And it's a non abelian convergence on how from the T-curve T that can propose to uh, match uh, the index two of a ZCD anomaly in three plus one D and result breaking the this discrete version of E minus H metric. Okay. So I say a lot of words. If you are interested, you can watch this. And the last thing is that there's a path interval we can write down, including the standard model sectors in uh, here, which is from here, down mills uh, with with all without say term and the vial fermions. And then familiar uh, the Higgs sectors and the Kawa sectors. But now the new policy is to use the TKLT set I8. I don't think I have a time to explain that. It will take another talk. But the whole thing is that the claim is that if we appropriate interpret the whole path and go together, it will be fully gauge uh, deformorphism and uh, the gauge invariant under the spin times discrete B minus A is equal margin to transformation. And that's the the, the kind of things called the uh, ultra in the sense of the standard model sector. If you include those background here, it was 15 bar per mil, it's not quite good to compare. With 16, it's, 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 it's getting better, but with 15, it's not. So then we have a room to a new surface. Okay. And the mass is based on this uh, symmetry extension. Okay. And that summarized my talk. Other than the Anderson Hicks familiar a confinement, parasymmetry breaking or some as confinement type of mechanism to uh, give mass. Uh, some of them are kind of mean field or quadratic uh, field theory, but uh, like, uh, they are more, more subtle kind of uh, mechanism developing strong dynamics. And today, uh, I try to use the last mechanism called symmetry extension gap phase, such that I extend the G symmetry to a G tilde, such that G anomaly becomes trivialized in G tilde and then gate K to bring down some T of T and then cancel the, uh, the whole anomaly but preserve G. And once that is done, you go back to this case of symmetry gap public order. And this way of thinking, I think it requires really a, a interacting way of thinking, a many body way. If you want to formulate some the model field theory to do this, it will require us uh, to, uh, to do some information that aiding heavy sector done. But today, I, I just try to construct a teacher of this letter and say that they can uh, couple together with SN standard model to uh, the cancel the wall now. Okay, thanks. So uh, I think I'll scare this. You just say that uh, really want to put this all together, say that uh, other than the standard model sectors, we might really need teacher of these sectors. And other things I mentioned, all the numerous things I mentioned could be all layer. The energy scale layer is not known. In a sense, what's the energy gap for the, if there's a gap topological order type of system, what's the gap size? It's not determined. It can be very, very small, small to even the standard model particle scale. But it could be very large at the dark scale. But uh, anyway, but one can put this all together. Okay, so let's go to a second part, hopefully. Uh, I'm not sure how do I, I think one thing, maybe one, one, one question or kind of a thesis is some people will emphasize that the gauge group is very important, the unity of the gauge process. So seeking the gauge group might be a very important tool for uh, people like the Professor Wilcher. For people like Professor Cyber Hill might say that gauge group is not quite a physical description, it's mainly duality. So kind of a work we did is kind of a, a provide a view to think about actually these are com complementary or can put, put together. So, you know, the standard law is that all vacuum may be governed by some candidates in the model, and it can lead to some granular vacation by God is breaking at, by some, at some high energy scale and break down by a sequence of breaking. But in our way, we are not just doing that. We can view that as well. We are introduced an alternate view that standard model is a low energy quantum vacuum arise from competition between God and God. So we are not choosing any, just one of them. We are choosing uh, all the sets. They can all compete in with each other. And such that the uh, ultimately be put on some larger phase diagram or some moduli space or landscape we call. 
So the conventional way might be go like this. There's a, a gauge group for SM and you're looking for God, and maybe higher God and other things. And uh, the tuning parameter here is not the trial the specified, at least not the, in the sense of the quantum matter or condensed matter thinking about quantum criticality based on vision. The point of view we're thinking is that there's actually a parameter we can tune a quantum backdoor. And such that the, the gut may be just a neighbor phases. It may be all just along us if we can change the vacuum structure anywhere in part of the old vacuum. Just like create a domain wall inside the domain wall, maybe a different vacuum. If there's a case, we may be moving to a different vacuum. But what we find is that the standard model in certain scenario actually uh, arise naturally between the George Barasha and Pali Salam rotations, and such that there's a quantum critical region, a critical in the sense of gapless, like a CFT or like other gapless modes. The standard model just, uh, 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 just uh, happened to be nearby that critical region. And I will show you that. The critical region are schematically show in a gray area. So these are the point of view we take. But these are also compatible with the modern view of deformation class, like quantum field theory. Or the dimension class of quantum gravity. If we consider space time symmetry for a moment, thinking about always some global symmetry, I just say the limit, the limit I say that thinking about internal scale as global, then we can ask the anomaly for those theory and classify like coordinate group and species of our And these are these are all deformable, even though they may look different, but they may be deformable by adding heavy sectors, anomaly free heavy sector interact and move to another vacuum. So we are trying to move around this vacuum and then we will speed side this cobalism class. So we should treat this internal as global symmetry. And then these are physical question. Then you can ask what's the unity of this internal unified symmetry as a global and that limit. Later on, we will gauge them. And once you gauge them, there's a consideration of also higher symmetry and invertible, invertible non-invertible, so-called also the categorical symmetries. Okay, and once you gauge them, the gauge theory also have a many duality. So that goes to the other view. So I, I think uh, this actually comprehends the two point of view. I don't think there's so any uh, sharp contradiction or anything. You just use this type of view. And I think thinking about the deformation class. So the deformation class actually we need is a two cobalt invariant combined together. One is the one we just specified, the ZCN class that I already mentioned. Another one is the WPW3. And one is the ZC2 and the ZC2 class. We are, we are doing for the SM or the BSM physics, living on the boundary of such things. Or if we want to remove them, we want to cancel them by the, the, the new sectors. So that's the logic. Any question about this? I, I can clarify because some notation kind of repeat. I don't know where I should go. Yeah. So stop me anytime to get those any part. So in general, we can regard this SM. As the quantum uh, or near quantum critical region between complete uh, vacuum, especially the gap vacuum. We'll demonstrate one example very clearly uh, George Gosh and Paddy Salon. And internal symmetry here is treated as some global symmetry first. In that case, actually, this analogs to a realization of so called deconfined quantum criticality proposed by these people, central vision right now at all. And these are we are re re realizing the same uh, 3 plus 1d uh, with the model very close to our vacuum of this. And in that case, we will start with the 16 instead of 15 vial permits because we don't want to deal with the 15 first. There's, a, there's, a, there's a 16 around it for a moment. So we consider 16 vial permits and move around the formation class or constraint by that. We will mention that. And then we will later gauge the global symmetry, dynamical gauge. Okay. So because I said criticality, it just clarify the word because you may not be clear what it is. It means there are some gapless sectors and gapless from the ground and the continuum spectrum at the infinite large size limit. This can be massless in the single particle picture or conformal in parity with a finite but infinite sort of correlation lens. And the criticality either can be continuous phase transition, which means a phase boundary in the phase diagram. Then there's the unstable or critical point or line such that you have an unstable RG flow. These are, sorry, these are unstable fixed point. Then there's some, at least one relevant perturbation to go away. So for example, these are the phase boundary. So these are, can be called as criticality, these are gapless. But these are uh, unstable fixed point and you can move to either side by some uh, 
definition for the vision. It could also be a critical phase, a stable critical region controlled by a stable RG point. So at a small perturbation, you cannot move along from there. And that's the critical region here as speech by for simply can be a gap region. Small deformation is still gap -less. Okay, so these are criticality. It means either critical phase transition or critical phase. But the phase transition can include continual phase transition, just as I out earlier, as a second order or higher order with gap mode. Or first of all, this continuous phase transition, first order without gap mode. But in that case, there's a finite correlation that the description of the phase transition. With that clear, uh, we start with a model that we introduced of SO10 during vacation with spin 10 gate group plus some new sectors, which we modify the spin 10 model with some discrete token class of some term, which we don't know exactly what's the name, but we call this a WZW, we, we, uh, uh, this WZW term, just for the similar nature that we will pull the system on by the uh, bulk 4D boundary, and there are some realizations in 4D. We will write a theory also on the 5D, so that we call a discrete token class of WZW term. Once we add that, then the situation is that uh, there is some phase diagram. So let me clarify, if we don't add this WZW term, what happened is that we can still add some potential of God Higgs potential look like this. There's a quadratic term and quadratic term. And you can tune the R, which is a quadratic term, written here, R45 and R54. They can tube from larger than zero or smaller than zero, which changes God Higgs whether you have a VAF or no. Once he Higgs have a VAF, it will condense to a value and will break down the Higgs group. If I condemn 45, you will break down the SO10 uh, down to this SO5 dot. Oh, by the way, the 45 is a representation of the spin 10. Okay. It's also a representation of the SO10, but 45 and 44 is a representation of the graphics in the representation of spin 10. Once I condense the 45 by tuning R45 to small than zero, then it can condense to SO5 if I start from SO10. Once I condense uh, this uh, R44 by tuning R45, Fifty-four. This coefficient too negative. Then I will condense the uh, the uh, fifty-four, and then we'll bring this uh, SO10 dot to polysolar. I also should mention I use a lower class to specify the Lie algebra. I will careful to write everything clearly for the Lie group as the capital case, and then just go with the lower case for the convention people sometimes use to to, to clarify. Okay, so that's the forty-five and fifty-four. Higgs field, you can achieve go to SU5 or this uh, party salon, SU4 times SU2 times SU3. But if I condense both, you will go to standard model. This phase diagram can already be achieved without adding the modified discrete torsion class V8. But the difference is that if we don't add that term, then there's there is not clear way to go between George Gas and Party Salon. Only the only way you can go to without go to other phases will be go to this fine tune point. Fine tune in the sense you need to tune two parameters to go between two phases. This is very difficult. The new model effective field theory we introduce is adding a new term such that the low energy structure near this point will be modified by a critical gapless phase. If this is a critical gapless phase and there are some new region, one can go between George Gasha and Pali Salam through a larger critical theory in a way Without necessarily uh, go to uh, spin 10 or the, the, the conventional spin 10 for the same model. So that's a new picture we have. But another cool thing is that because of adding this new uh, WW term, actually, all the phase diagrams are controlled by a deformation class of an anomaly of WW's term. So you should view, view this as a phase diagram of a 4D theory labeled by this uh, Higgs potential. A parameter tune and control by a deformation class of one high dimensional composition layer W2, W3, and which we are going to speak about in the last few minutes. So, any question? So, to summarize, to manifest such a beyond SM, beyond standard model, and also beyond so called, it's beyond Landau principle paradigm, because these are the Landau principle paradigm, we will aid the new terms to go beyond Landau principle and realize this critical region. And without fine tuning to go between the two, two dark and dark. Well, While all vacuum up is living here, standard model, it's not clear where is the phase diagram, uh, 
which point in the base diagram? That's really a scenario, but that's just something somewhere. Then we go between the two and we introduce a parent or model that it gives the EFT and such that aiding this new term will write it down to, to match this anomaly. This anomaly is not saturated by standard model because standard model doesn't even have the anomaly, also does not need for SU5 God or put this alone or even spin 10. You can check all this theory does not have that anomaly. So that's why all that theory can already live on four dimension or 16 bio frames per generation. But the difference is that we are aiding a term from a God Higgs potential sector, construct a W double term such that that term can be living, require a living on the boundary of this W, two W term. But the purpose for that will just be connect the two sectors to this, the use of this W double term and the W W three anomaly. Okay. And later on, we'll keep the internal symmetry. Then the punchline is that once the 4D series gave the, the original critical theory, is a 4D critical theory in the sense of critical gap, critical gap of the theory. But uh, when the theory uh, has this W2, W3 tangent bundle and SO10 also gauged, because SO10 is gauged, spin 10 is gauged, then that means that 5D can also be gauged. Then there's a critical region when the spin time is preserved. Actually, there's a tunnel or channel connect to the 5D alpha dimensional board. But only when you go to spin 10, you can go to 5 dimension. If you limit your gauge group to standard model group, or SU5, or party salon, or even without the physical term, then you have no way to go to access F dimension. But if that's the initial play out, you can go to, you can, you can, uh, you have a, you have a list, you leave a boundary of that one high dimension and you gauge spin 10, then only when your energy is enough to go to spin 10, then you will signal something goes to higher dimensions. And that's why we say, uh, gauge enhance, enhance in the way of enhance to spin 10, dynamical guard hits field, actually can also probably go to extra dimension of 5D both. But now limited, not, not the case limited to SU3 or SU2, you want other guard, smaller guard groups. Uh, any question? Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so that these are the really uh, basic mathematical checks to ch check that in order to embed the space time and internal symmetry properly to spin 10 group, actually there's a constraint of the modular Z6 for the standard model group. And uh, also for the modular Z2 for the public salon group. And then you can also appropriately include the discrete mass and sector if you want. That, that's the, same, the one I mentioned in part one of the talk. And there's a cheeks breaking back that I already explained, so I won't show you. Condense both go to standard model, Condense either one to the GG or party cell and PS model. Any question? So the model interview field theory, other than the familiar Yangnion bio Higgs, and uh, there is actually a Yukawa Higgs term. The way we write down the God Higgs field, which is contained in 54 and 45, we combine them to the 10 times 10 dimension, 100. Uh, 100. We can write down as a 10 dimensional representation of spin 10 and 10 dimension combined as a bi vector Higgs, which also is a 100 dimensional representation and of spin 10, and they will split to 45 and four and the singular or the one sector. And then with that, this 100 uh, dimensional representation, uh, the bi vector actually can couple to the uh, the uh, 10 dimensional vector of the, 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 the Higgs field. You can think about this are more like a composite of the Gar Higgs of phi, phi vector with the ordinary 10 dimension vector. And then there is a natural way to couple this 10 dimension vector to the uh, standard model biofermion side. But that's not what we really only we did. We actually require to add a, a term, which is called a uh, term that writing as some two from this field for the two uh, second cohomology class B field. Depends on whether you want to differential form or cohomology class. There's some class you can read them down as BBC will come from in the next slides. And for people who want to check all the details about this, I actually encourage you to read this paper by McGrady and all. Uh, they have the same theory, uh, similar theory, except I don't really construct that out of the, the spin tank graph. I will do this out of the spin tank graph from this convention. Okay, so the whole thing together is the parent better theory, but there's a different possible realization of WW, and we will introduce. And the clarification is that uh, uh, this realization actually is 
not the not quite the ordinary way because the usual way when you try to introduce Higgs, either this will be similar to breaking, which means uh, older the, the field, so that the line, for example, ferromagnet and ferromagnet. So these are older by older older the field by symmetry and symmetry breaking. It could also be disorder, which means the target space becomes disorder and symmetry might be too third. So these are kind of convention we're thinking. Uh, another thing which actually already um, have an insight from P.W. Anderson is this fractionalization. This idea is that even though uh, the, the field we introduced like a bivector field might be certain representation, but we might be able to fractionalize it. In a sense, the spin system you see in the condensed matter system might be very boring the horizontal spin, but who knows, these spins might be fractionalized to fractionalize anions. And that's the same idea. The graphics we introduce might really look boring, just conventional 100 or 50 or 45 dimensional representation graphics of spin 10, but they can be fractionalized. And the important part of difference between the composite graphics, uh, which just written as the bivector in terms of something that is a vector decomposed 100 to 144, that's the term we introduced here. Uh, this here. The new thing here is that the new idea is that uh, kind of uh, a line motivated by this fractionalization idea uh, back to Anderson. They are pattern and uh, emergent gauge fields. They can split the original, uh, original what you might view, elementary graphic field as some pattern and emergent gauge field. So we will find. Uh, we will make this uh, bivector graphics field as a bond between some fractionalized pattern, which is a fermion, and a bond by some gauge field. And we'll write down more precisely, but that's the idea. So these are more like similar to uh, something called, uh, let's say, a uh, long range entangle resonant balance bond, solid state, or the uh, fractionalized spins to other degree to them, spin one to spin one half, or even to fermions. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go now just this route. We'll include this as well, but we include one more. So that's why we not just say fractionalization for ordinary way. It's not just composite, but it's fragmentary of this. So the contents, uh, okay, so let, let me just, uh, uh, actually, how much time do I have? I think I have uh, probably uh, a few more slides. Very quick. Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks. So the first part I said, I write down a, a the, uh, this, this term of the W of term of, in terms of some cohomology class of the potential form, but there, I haven't given you a construction out of the, uh, the bivector or uh, this graphics field. How do you know this makes sense? The thing is indeed makes sense. It can be checked by homotopy group and cohomology group. Uh, homotopy group in a sense, we need to check when you start from spin chain group breakdown to U5 or the Party salon group, SU, uh, SU4, SU2, SU2, which is spin six times spin four, and the uh, real device is the same as SO6, SO4. And the Bosani sector will be uh, at some kind of uh, uh, the total space with some breaking down to uh, some uh, target space. And uh, you can see what's the, you know, there's a way you can view as some vibration or some, uh, this, uh, yeah, these are the space we are talking about, the, the, the targets after breaking. And then we can ask, whether this, there are some non-trivial topological defects, traps in this space, then the, the, the computation in the most semi-classical way without computing for multiple group. What is required to construct this WW term in 4D, leading on 5D boundary, is that we should find out the homotopy group in either dimension. Let's say a dimension D1 from the TG, some dimension and D2 from the party salon, then use them, such that the, the D1 plus D2 dimension will equal to four. And we can see such a construction is possible if we look at the pi two. So the pi two of the G has some defect with Z class and pi two of the pi is along with the Z class. We can construct a topological uh, objects out of these two terms. Um, and uh, similar to the, just the BDC term we write down. And there's an even more formal argument to look at the cohomology class to make sense why, why we write this C term and D term really is there. There's a Z2 cohomology class really there and D term out of this, and then we claim that we can control this W that can out of this graphic field. So these are the first part, the bosonic construction. But we want to do further uh, how the W that can be uh, so fractionalized in a fragmentary way with patterns and uh, graphics uh, become patterns and this emerging field. 
And in that part, we will rewrite W double term in terms of a four D and five D series, such that it's more like a five D series of uh, 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 domain wall, such that uh, there's a, a mass terms, such that on one side m larger than zero, on the other side m smaller than zero, and the domain wall series, the four D series, uh, realized by this term. The theory we propose as a uh, the realization of W W of or by, by this uh, so-called we call the pattern construction is rewrite this W of a term as a fermion pattern theory, mm -hmm. such that this fermion pattern coupled to both the, the dot Higgs field, as well as the emergent the gauge field that I advertised earlier, which is actually a dark gauge sector. This dark gauge sector is not seen or interact with the standard model particles, the quartz and leptons precisely like this. And uh, if we integrate out such a domain wall mass, the claim is that uh, we will reproduce, you can see, you can look at this, they have a natural coupling to a P and C term, we will reproduce this W like term BBC. And then the next few slides will be going to check that, how do you know whether this term really produced the new I C two, oh, sorry, the W2, W3 anomaly? Uh, the previous W, W term uh, produced by BBC actually already be argued by a uh, paper by McGreevy at all, this, can be viewed as a realization on the bulk and boundary, uh, and uh, the bulk has W2, W3 anomaly. But how do we know? Although we just argue that integral term you can get BDC, we can actually use a trick to check more carefully is that uh, we can write the original, first we need to specify the 4D theory, what's actually what's the type of the spin, spin or spinner. These are actually 10 dimensional representation, SO10 or spin 10. And these are a Dirac spinner instead of the vial spinner. The vial spinner is the space time vial spinner psi L of the standard model quark and lepton sector, which is in the 16. The new fermions we introduced is the 10 dimension of the spin 10, and which is a Dirac fermion. And then this, this Cassi fermion actually has two left component, two right component. And if we go to five dimension, we do three and double, which is the four, compo uh, four component of spin 1, 4, but it's double them. And the claim is that once we integrate, we get the, 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 the WG of the the correct anomaly. And the way to check now is the following. Uh, first, we need to be careful because I originally specified a, a space, space time structure between spin and the spin of space time symmetry and internal spin 10, they share from priority. If you are careful about the space time internal structure, you know these are not compatible with the new fermion we introduce because this actually require the fermions must be 16 dimensional representations. These are similar to the spin C constraint that you, you, you do uh, to the U1 charge fermion, Dirac fermion. Here, these are the, uh, the, the relation between space time and internal relation that constrain the fermion. So, if you want to introduce fermion in the structure, it must be 16 dimensional or some odd number of that. But 10 dimension actually can be double the 16, which is not quite compatible. So, that actually means that we actually need to introduce a new fermion priority into the theory. And then actually, you may call double spin, D spin structure. In the previous stream literature, we already people discussed the D pin structures. And we have a similar structure also discussed E pin in my reference site earlier in the slides. Here, we need to introduce a D spin structure with two different types of fermion parity and share the same space and SO structure. With that, we can write down the precise space time internal symmetry such that there is a spin C prime from the new gauge field, uh, which we first introduce a dynamical U1 gauge field here. Not, not a standard model gauge field, the dark gauge field. And also the spin 10. They, that, that's the, the, the term, the, the spin from the couple two. Then including both, then the required the new type of QED four prime structure is required space on spin C prime of SO10. And if you include the SO10 gas sector, then we need to require the D spin and share with spin time is equal to one three again, and then share with one prime is equal to one parity, new from one parity due to S prime. Any question about this? So we need to introduce this structure. And you will ask very strangely, how can I just introduce a 10 dimensional vector fermion? It looks a vector Dirac fermion. You can just add your own mass, you can gap it. How can a quadratic mass gap, gapable term fermion can have any anomaly? So the, the, the thing hidden here is actually we require additional 
uh, symmetry to be introduced to for these other quality terms. But this term, for example, is related to one is the, the U1 gauge sector, one prime, the new, new dot gauge sector. He already forbids certain Murana mass term because it requires a complex U1. But secondly, we also need to introduce some subtle discrete uh, CP prime and T prime structure that we define in this way. They will forbid the vector mass or the actual mass, pseudo scalar mass. And uh, this mass, type of quadratic mass, can indeed gap the 10 dimensional vector representation of this new fermion to see by if we demand that symmetry are uh, either layer protected or gauged, then we can forbid those mass terms. Then those fermions, if not gappable, we can ask what are the anomalies. Then the tricks we use is use the new S2 anomaly to check, which means that we want to view uh, the fermions in the representation of some S2 and then count the representation of the S2 of that fermions and then count the number and to see that it has multiple anomaly. The Cauchy fermion somehow have a, a 10 component and uh, charge one in U1, or we can count. We can also, we also have a Dirac two component, but we can actually view as two bio. So that introduced a two component bio, S2 and 10. So we enlarge the gate to, for a moment to compare that with the S2, new S2 anomaly. So we introduce again S2 and S10 structure for, for, the, for that representation. And precisely the space time internal symmetry representation will be written this way, which is spin C generalization C of U1 to H, H of S2. And then with some space time SO10 factor. And then the modified SO10 graph will require this structure. So these are kind of analogs to this. But when we move to that structure, we can compare the uh, SO2 anomaly. And in the top, I summarize uh, the way we did this each one, how we read the global new SO2 anomaly out of the representation's branching rule. We will read uh, in the very end. But let's look at the data. First of all, Familiar anomaly like spin and SU2 in five dimension, which coded in five dimension, capture 40 anomaly has two, uh, one class is equal to the written SU2 anomaly. The covalent invariant can be written in this way, C2 of string class of the SU2 bundle and E not prime with some spin covalent invariant in 1D, uh, one more circle. If, but if you have this spin and SU2 mix relation fixed the Fermat priority model, there's a two such anomaly. One is a, with an anomaly, the other is a new S2 anomaly. This actually can only be detected on non spin manifold, which W2 must be non zero, non trivial. And that has a constraint on TN, tangent bundle, and space time, SO, uh, sorry, the internal SO3 bundle. And there's also a generalization from spin, spin three of SO2 to spin 10, and that's the same anomaly still survive. And these are the same as the class of that term. But how do, you, uh, how do you detect that anomaly in the Fermi theory? Then, in the previous work, we can show that if you have SU2 of doublet, which is a uh, doublet of SU2, a two doublet but fundamental two of SU2, of, or for the resolution 4R plus 2, then it has an anomaly. The new SU2 anomaly work we did is that we show that the fermions in the isospin three half of SU2 or four component of SU2, then it has that anomaly. So we want to boil down a branch rule such that uh, we can lift uh, the, the gauge group appropriately without changing the anomaly structure and then branch rule down again and to a new S2 prime. The punchline is that there is such a term, uh, such a breaking to be read anomaly such that uh, uh, for all the process, we can guarantee that uh, the, the uh, for example, like uh, maybe, let me see, the, uh, yeah, let me say this. We have, it, when, we, when, we, when we look at this two and 10, actually these are two of SU2 prime and they are 10 of them. So you know, it doesn't have a, a written an anomaly because they have a 10, even number of them, 10 mark to zero. But it also doesn't have four of SU2 prime. So this SU2 prime doesn't have an anomaly. So the anomaly later is captured is, is contained in the SO10. So we will look into this SO10. But the way we do is go into higher, larger group and then without changing anomaly structure and break down again. We change it to a new SU2 prime, double prime group. And we can read the new sector uh, has SU2 double prime as uh, some other group. And this, this sector doesn't have an anomaly, but this one has four components of SU2 prime. Uh, according to the work, would be on new SU2 anomaly has a W of SU2 anomaly. So we can interpret this anomaly three from the SO10. And because of the earlier 
this spin, this spin structure, there's a conjoint between gravitational part between morphism and space time spin time. So that's the anomaly we claimed earlier. This is a W3, W3, this anomaly. So the punchline here is that we verify the fermion Poisson theory indeed has this W3, W3 anomaly of, of this, this, this one. And the fermion Poisson theory is a fractionalization out of the God Higgs potential constructed W0, W3. And with that, uh, we complete these constructions and we can explore the phase diagram with appropriate uh, representation of the neighbor vacua of the SO10, which contain all the 16 multiplied, or the GG, 5 by 10, 1, or the different type of uh, uh, U5 or SU5 called the free model. Sorry, I should, I should guide you again. These are the SO10, spin 10, verification. These are the uh, GG, George Garcia. These are the free model. And these are the parties along. And these are the SN. This all can be realized by the first part, the known part of the uh, sectors. But introduce this WZW after they fractionalize, we can produce a new contents of partners. They have the, they are in the 10 dimensional spin 10, and they can be written as some appropriate dimension of SU5 and can further break down to familiar SU3, SU2 of the standard model group. First of all, you carry the gauge charge one of the dark gauge sector, but you also have some color and flavor of SU3 and SU2. And uh, this color and flavor are not quite the same structure as the familiar quark lepton in the standard model. So that's why we say these are called uh, fractionalizations yeah. uh, of the, this proton state. Yeah. And uh, then you may ask if proton are there, and also charge on the SU3 and SU2, why don't we see them? Because it depends well with standard model sectors. So let go, go back to, we need to explore the phase diagram where we are possibly in, if this model ever makes sense. And with appropriate way of aging the dark Higgs potential, uh, earlier I kind of showed you that how to break down the larger spin 10 group to a smaller, uh, smaller dark Higgs, uh, dark, dark set, smaller dark group sectors. And the standard model will show up by appropriate breaking, but uh, right now we want to tune the potential a bit further by tuning between the George Glashow and part, uh, the free model. And this basically uh, go to the case that uh, uh, actually let me just pause a second because I want to make sure whether people ask questions because I kind of say a lot. I want to make sure people are still follow. So that's very important. And thanks for staying. Any more questions? The logic is that uh, we now modify the spin 10 model such that there's a way uh, to uh, relate to the Dutch and Paris in some way uh, goes to a critical gapless region. And that's where the new gut Higgs aiding this new discrete torsion that is double class play a role that there's some fra fragmentary excitations when you go between the two. Uh, actually, it's uh, George Garsh and Paris Salam, but it doesn't really harm us to aid one more neighbor vacua, which is a free model. What you will find out is that the George Garsh and the free model, actually they are different by a different uh, symmetry, Randall twins by symmetry breaking back of the same representation of the Higgs field, the 4 5 but just a different type of that. So this type of a uh, uh, transition, phase transition, if we draw in the phase diagram from this one to the other one, actually they only go through a conventional phase transition of the first order type. However, the difference is that if we go between GG and Paris alone, or the free model to Paris alone, actually they are critical region. And now I'm going to put them in a phase diagram together. So these are the breaking pattern, just by the legal structure you know this. But these are the dynamics, in a sense, uh, a point based diagram. By tuning the 45 and 54, I, earlier I showed you that the, uh, this, the, 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 the four phase SM, GG, PS, and SO10 all are in the same phase diagram and with some quantum physical region. Well, in the, the lower part is that if I change the breaking vector or the potential of tuning the uh, 45, in a in, in certain way, in a way, in a way, in a way I ate it in this term, uh, competing between condensed to first type of that a second time. Actually, uh, we can go to a different a free model. Then the whole phase diagram can pull together and we can study, first of all, 
the scenario here say that the, the standard model and our theory might be stronger in that part of this diagram. And earlier, the frag, 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 fragmentary uh, citations from fractionalized this uh, got his field actually is very heavy, even though they couple to possible color and flavor sector in that scenario, it's very heavy. We don't really see them because once we go to the standard model back, back here, the gun Higgs field give a, a lot depth, and then you will also give a mass to the proton theory, the fermion proton, which is the Cossi fermion right earlier. And those those fermions give a large mass. It may not be it may not be easily seen to low energy physics. So that's the earlier answer. So if those things are there, okay, how, how do we not observe them? So 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 these are the the kind of picture all the all the phase diagram uh, say that uh, we are not quite uh, close to the critical region. Okay. I should say that all these are just kind of a, a scenario play by starting from a few or something we, we, we start with. It doesn't really mean all vacuum must be this type, but it's kind of a even a, a thing for quantum field theorists or even for conventional people they try to study a different type of quantum vacuum and quantum criticality. This is actually a really good uh, system one can look at, but you can take it more seriously because these two type of anomalies I mentioned controlled by the, uh, the two class W2, W3 and the, the easy season class invariant might be really play some important role. Okay. So I have uh, mentioned the two, the, the last part will just be a combined a synthesis of the two uh, scenarios. Instead of just focusing on either 15 biofermion plus new sectors, or 16 biofermions, we can also have uh, some part 15, some part 16, so the phase type won't be more rich. Uh, for familiar, people familiar with this, uh, tuning different number of biofermions and tuning between these sectors with new sector, the TQLP or CFT, you will know that these are also called some topological criticality or topological phase transition. Here, the topological here has a specific meaning, evolving either topological order or some highly entangled sectors. It's not quite just the topological over the sense how we control WZW. That one is more like semi-classical of topological. Here, this topological is more intrinsic and uh, more long and entangled. And lastly, uh, I think this will just be like two seconds or a minute to summarize where can we find a non-invertible uh, category symmetry and where, how it's actually done after we look at the theory in the spin time theory. Yeah. So I have mentioned the common phase diagram. Earlier, I focused on tuning the 45 digital dimensional representation with the God Higgs field. And then once you tune that, you can tune between the SO10 to GGO flip or the S standard model or the polysonal model. But uh, uh, there's a critical region if we add the modified spin tank model, or uh, spin tank verification by the new W0 term. The new thing here is that if we look at all this data, actually the George Garshaw and the standard model, the particle content of them, they really don't necessarily require 16 bar from them. They can have 15. For example, George Garshaw can have a 5 bar plus 10. The standard model they can have the other 15 bar from us. And if, if we start from a 15 bar from us, then we need to move to other vector of a 16 bar from us. Then there's a, there's a transition which we need to not just tune in from by uh, we cannot just do this by uh, tuning the dark Higgs potential. We might need to introduce, bring down a new sector from, for example, the, the one, the first part of the talk, I say there could be a new tuning sector in the George Garshaw or the standard model. Then we need to change the GPD sector to the fermion theory. And that's actually a very rich thing, uh, changing between topological field theory uh, toward massless free fermion, the gap theory of GPD to the massless theory. It certainly depends on the number of generation you are going to change. Uh, there are details of things we can enumerate. In our papers, we kind of discuss all the details of how the phase transition uh, theoretically will go from one to the others. And there's a big table you can look at. I think right now we don't have time. And the whole things we've mentioned is that they are controlled by a dimension class of the uh, five dimensional composition of the uh, system. Right. Uh, any question? I'm almost going to end my talk now. So the last part is that uh, uh, I, I did uh, mention the higher symmetries the, of the, the model 
and I want to make sure whether people are still following me and they want to hear, or do, they, do, do you want me to conclude? Either way is fine, because we will take another few slides, two slides, but uh, I can just end here without mentioning this. I don't know what's the, what's the... Uh, you, you, you can mention the higher symmetry. I, I think uh, people, for people who have to leave their free okay. to leave, but it will be yeah. interesting to hear about higher symmetry. Okay, Thanks. okay. So, so the situation is the following. Uh, the first, when I start to start, uh, mention this uh, U5 case group, U5 group, of the Jewish branch and Pakistan Salam. Actually, there's a, a refinement of uh, people usually not uh, paying enough attention is that uh, the lead group, when we write the real device U5 or supertype U1, actually when we write uh, U5, they require a uh, super lead group and U1 model some uh, common Z5 group. But there's a way to identify such a Z5 sub group. For example, the S U5 center Z5 may be generated by any of the Z5 element. Sim similarly, the U1, you can also identify any uh, charge one of U1 as a generator. And then how do you identify the Z5 centers or uh, element with the charge one of U1 as a choice? It turns out that you can have a different way of identifications. And that's why the U5 has different refined structure. They use a sub-label, you have to label. It turns out they are, they are three, at least three, or I think there's three types. The, the, the type labeled by Q has is actually, it can be labeled by one, two, three, four, and uh, five. It turns out this uh, MAR5 uh, identification. The theory with this Q and Q plus five are isomorphic, but they're not necessarily the one within the MAR5. It turns out U5 of two equal to one and four are the same, and two and three are the same, but zero is different as U5 and U1. What did you, George Garshan and Bas free model, model really require is a different U5 group. In a sense, different things says not a U5 one, but U5 two. So that's the first presentation. Without this value structure, actually a lot of invading to spin 10 group is very subtle, it's actually wrong. So that's one refinement point I want to point out before we have symmetry. Once taking care of that, we have known the internal symmetry of the, the uh, this on the internal symmetry of the standard model and gut. Uh, about the higher symmetry here is that uh, we can ask for the electric or one form for magnetic or one form symmetry, which takes the center part. Uh, that's the pure gate theory. The center part of the internal symmetry group is the, the uh, one, one form electric symmetry. And these are the data. And the homotopy group, first homotopy group pi one, and this Pontiandian uh, dual actually specify the one form magnetic symmetry for the pure gate theory. But once we add the charge, the charge matter from the standard model particle contents, it will break part of the higher symmetries. The result is that a lot of the one form symmetry actually are broken, the electric one, especially the one actually can be embedded in the spin tank orientation, like GSM6, the mass 6 type of the standard model, or the Padisalon mass 2 type of the Padisalon model, these all don't know how the electric one form symmetry. Neither of these been but there's still some magnetic symmetry there. So, uh, so there's some magnetic symmetry one can play a role. What we see more about our work is that we are looking at the, the uh, two U5 model, which is the George Glashow and the Palisar model, the U5, the first and second, let's call the first as the George Glashow GG, and the second as Palisar Lam. We should be so the first and the second as the subscript X and Y for this George Glashow and Palisar model. You can write on the charge lattice for those both U1, and they are flipped under a Z2 flip symmetry. The Z2 actually will be gauged if you go to a spin 10 group, it's a part of spin 10 subgroup. And however, we can ask just for the sake of thinking about both U5 free and GG model and free model, both of the U1, one for magnetic symmetry left, not broken by the gauge charge matter of the standard model. If the city flip is there, are there some non invertible categorical symmetry? Which means we need to identify some uh, symmetry generator as some topological defects. And then these are topological defects, or known as the charge operator. We will study the fusion rule for such operator and then see whether they obey the group law. If they don't, then there's non invertible symmetry. And it turns out that if people know the invertible symmetry, it's familiar with that structure, with this semi derivative tool, the gauge invariant operator is more involved. 
and the fusion rule is also more evolved into speed split. So the fusion rule for this type of uh, uh, magnetic surface operator, the full one for magnetic surface, within this gauge set will indeed be non invertible But the question is, are they really there in the Gauss model, like George Glashow, Pati Salon? Oh, sorry, George Glashow and free model, both do fight for the spin turn. So the answer is actually they don't, they don't survive, they are gone. Even starting with part of gauge group, embedded group, the 2U1 and the Z2 group. And by the way, they share the common Z4, the same Z4 I mentioned in the very beginning of code, the discrete B minus L version of that X. They actually, uh, when they embed into the 2U5 model with the free model, inevitably the gauge structure will already bring us to the spin 10. But we already know the spin 10 group does not have any, any magnetic symmetry. By gauging structure for that, that gave to the spin 10, every high symmetry will be gone. So same for the, this non virtual symmetry, which you might be able to view it. If you break down the gauge group properly to low energy to this one, you may see non virtual symmetry, but they are not really there at UV. So that's basically a quick story about uh, one possible category symmetry. Seems fine as some low energy realization of some new by George Gashan, free model, but they are really gone at UV. Okay, and there are other stories we comment about that, but uh, that's basically it. That's basically it. So, Summary is the same. You just combine the story and uh, and the make make the sound mix mix. Yeah, play some play along. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's thank Julian for this great talk. Uh, are there questions? I, I do hope people can ask more questions. I'm sorry for uh, going over time, but I oh, expect that's, that's already going over time. Because there's a lot of things not there. So, so I actually have a question, but it's a more fundamental one. So it's mm -hmm. uh, for something on slide slide number eight. Mm -hmm. uh, very good, thank you very much. So, sorry, it's uh, about this triangle diagrams. Yes, that one. Okay. So, uh, the the number four does mm -hmm. that um, correspond to the theory has a two group symmetry. Uh, so you have like one gauge gauge node, uh, there's this gauge boson, and then there are two insertions or two global current. The existence right. of this right. diagram, is that a two group structure? Or? Uh, you might be right, but uh, I can uh, verify right now, but for two group, I think we need to mix with the zero point symmetry with yes, one and point one symmetry. Form. Yeah, here, here I'm not 100% sure. I think uh, at this moment, I think there's other one point gauge field coupled to the zero point symmetry. Yes. We may, yeah, we may need a one point symmetry somewhere. So I think the one form symmetry would be the magnetic one, U1 one one form symmetry for this gauge uh, field. Because if you have a U1 gauge theory, and then the Bianchi identity is a conservation for this U1 magnetic one form symmetry current. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I would just. Yeah, I, I think you might know better than me about two. No, no. <laughs> yeah, but but I think we just check with the, the zero point symmetry. And yeah, symmetry. yeah, sure. Because I think, yeah, yeah the, the two group symmetry is not an inconsistency. I, I guess, like, even a trivially gapped phase could have an unbroken two group symmetry. So it's, mm -hmm. um, so it's a different story. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Or any other question about other aspects of the talk, maybe more general logic. And uh, I think uh, I will show you some of Yeah, yeah. Uh, are there other questions? So let, let me just say a few things that these are just the uh, scenario uh, play around by hypothesize some possibility of deformation class of quantum field theory controlled by those cobosin uh, invariant. And uh, certainly it would be interesting to know how much these models are close to phenomenology. Yes, but uh, at this moment, it's not it's still on the way. But uh, I do feel like it would be interesting to think about that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's it.
So there. Oh, okay. Okay. Also, also thanks, uh, Christina, for the help. I really appreciate you sending me. Thanks, Cricket.